if you have a list showing among other columns a date and an amount and you want to analyze the amount for each range of the date then you can do that with a pivot table but if the source data changes you need to manually refresh the pivot table i am nabil murad in this tutorial I will show you how to create this report by using a group by function to summarize your data for every bracket or range of the date and create multiple calculations while everything refreshes automatically if the source data changes. Let's see how we do that in Excel. In this worksheet, I have a simple list showing a year column and an amount. And I would like to calculate the total amount for each range of years, let's say a range of five years. So I created a pivot table for this report. On another worksheet, I have the pivot table report, which shows brackets of five years and the total amount for each bracket and the percentage of the total sales for each bracket as well. If the source data changes, the pivot table needs to be refreshed manually, but I want to create the same exact report by using a group by function. In a previous tutorial, I explained all the basics of the group by function. You can watch this tutorial by clicking on the link in the description below the video. I also posted another tutorial on how to create a slicer for the group by function to simulate the slicer functionality in a pivot table. You can watch this tutorial as well by clicking on the corresponding link in the description below the video. I go back to my source data and I want to explain the concept of the solution. The challenging part is to create these brackets of five years. And I'm going to do that by creating a floor function. What does the floor function do? The floor function will round down each year to the closest significance. So I'm going to create the floor function equal floor and then I hit tab. I want the floor of this column. I select cell A2, shift control down, arrow control backspace. I type a comma and for the significance and because I want to create brackets of five, then I'll be typing five. So when I close the bracket and hit enter, this is what I'm getting. 1991 is pushed down to 1990, 2012, 2010, 2017 is pushed down to 2015. Then it rounds down the year to the closest significance you specify. But how to create the bracket? In another column, what if I type an equal sign and then I type a minus, I click on the number returned by the floor function and I type minus four. When I hit enter, I'm getting minus 1994. I can copy this function all the way down and that will be the upper and lower limit for the bracket I want to create. So if I join them together, so in column H, I'll be typing an equal sign. I click on cell D2, I use a joining operator and I click on the other number. When I hit enter, isn't that the bracket we are looking for? And I'm going to group using this bracket. Let's delete everything. I was just explaining the concept. And now let's wrap everything together with the group by function and I'll put them in a let function. The let function allows me to create variables, store values in these variables, and then use these variables in a calculation. I'm selecting cell D1 and then I start typing my let function. Equal let and then I hit tab. I hit Alt Enter to move to the next line. I want to expand my formula bar and then I create the first variable that will be storing the year and I'll call it A. I type a comma. What's the value for A? I select all the years starting from A2 down to the end and then I type a comma. I hit Alt Enter to move to the next line and the second variable will be storing the amount. I'll call it B comma. It will be referring to B2 down to the end. Shift control down arrow, control backspace. And then I type a comma. Now I want to create another variable that stores the floor function. I hit Alt Enter. I type C and then comma. 
I type my floor function, I open bracket, I want the floor of the variable a, comma, and the significance will be 5. As I showed you before, I then type a comma, I hit alt enter. My next variable that I'll be calling d will be storing the negative of the result of the floor function minus 4. Then I type d, comma, minus c, minus 4. I then type a comma and then I hit alt enter and I create my group by function. So I type group by, I hit tab. What do you want to group? What's the row field you want to group? I want to join the variable C and the variable D. Then I type C and D. That's the row field. I type a comma for the value field I want the amount and I name the amount B and then comma and let's create a sum function. So I type sum and I close the bracket for the group by function. I close the bracket for the let function. When I hit enter, this is what I'm getting. From 1990 to 1994, from 1995 to 1999. We want to improve this function. And I want to simulate the report that was created with the pivot table where I see the percentage of total. Then I'm going to edit my function and instead of just having the sum, I'll put the sum and another function in an edge stack function. Then I click before the sum, I type edge stack to stack horizontally. I open bracket, I click after the sum, I type a comma, and I use one of the new functions in Excel, the percent of. I close the bracket for the edge stack function, and now when I hit enter, I get what I was looking for. I have the brackets of five years, I have a sum, I have a percent of. I don't have a label for the years, and I want to change the label returned by the group by function. Then I'm going to create another variable in my let function, just for the labels. I click at the end of the D variable, and then I hit Alt Enter. My next variable will be called E. I type a comma. What's the value for E? It will be the headers in curly brackets. Then I type an opening curly bracket and in double quotation I'll be typing year, comma, total, comma, percent and I close the curly bracket. I type a comma, that's my variable E and I want to put these headers, the variable E, on top of the result of the group by function. But the group by function already has a header so I want to remove that header, I want to drop that header. Then I'll be wrapping my group by function in a drop function. I type drop, I hit tab. The group by function has its own header in the top row. Then I type comma one to drop the top row. And then I close the bracket for the let function. If I hit enter, this is what I'm getting. Now let's stack on top of this our header in the variable E. Then I'll be editing my function one last time. And before the drop function, I type a vstack function. I hit the tab key for the vstack. I want to stack the variable e, comma, and the group by function. And now I need to close the bracket one more time. When I hit enter, I get the result that I was looking for, which is exactly like the one I got with a pivot table. With a big difference, this one is dynamic. Any change in the source data, will refresh automatically. So if I change the first number for 1991, keep an eye on the total. What if I make it 2000? When I hit enter, it updates instantly, and that's extremely useful. I want to collapse the formula bar, Control shift u You might have noticed that I have some conditional formatting applied, and that improves the appearance of my labels and my numbers. And I created a beautiful report using the group by function that summarizes my data for every bracket or range of dates. And we created multiple calculations with the use of the let function, the floor function, the v stack, the drop, the group by, the sum, the edge stack, and the percent of. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching 
and see you next time.